I serve a God who can do exceedingly abundant, above all we would ask or think. We've heard that before this morning. So I had to learn to sift through and filter out those negative things. And it was a walk of faith because at that time I was more or less a pioneer. I was the only one doing that that I knew of. And, um, but as the, as the time went on, it was quite a battle because Paul would say to me, we were sitting on a park bench once at Whalen Park, and we, he was actually at home during that time um, because he would come home from time to time. I think it was because environmentally he thought if I get into the right place environmentally, all this guilt and that terrible lack of peace will go away. So he had come home, but he, his heart was still not at home. And we'd gone to Whalem, and he's, he's sitting on a bench, and he, he looks at me. And I love to do this, and I'm glad that this is being filmed today because I can make that face. And now looking back, it's so different. Paul just said to me, I bet you think that your God is going to do some great big miracle in my life. Don't you? <laughs> and I have to say, I was silent which was amazing for me to be silent. <laughs> but I was silent. But in my heart, yes, I do. And then I'm, I'm thinking, oh, you are crazy. Don't you know God heard you say that? And all I can think of is that saying, not even God can sink the Titanic. And I just said, oh, you know. But anyway, we had, um, it was, a, it was a, a long battle, and I had to really learn to stand. And I want to tell you that at this very altar, back in the early 90s, I had been going to a, a nearby church, and I had been told by that pastor that Paul would never change, and he even verbalized that to the congregation, that Judy Russo needs to stop saying those things, she needs to get on her, with her life and just get a divorce. And so I knew what God had called me to, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to go there any longer, so I stepped down from leadership, and um, God directed me here, and after a few weeks, uh, Pastor Lee Stevens, who was here at the time, told the congregation of my need and asked for those that were willing to pray with me for my marriage to come forward. And I'm pleased to say that there are several of those people here in this room that heard that very thing. So um, a, a prayer group was formed that began to pray for marriages and families. And that actually kind of came together in February of 95. And, um, and so the battle continued to rage. Paul would say, I am never, ever, ever, ever coming home. I don't love you. I don't hate you, but I'm not coming home. So I just have to tell you the Walmart story because most of you have probably heard, how many have heard, how many have heard it? Okay. How many haven't? Well, there are some. Okay, and, and then after this Walmart story, I'll kind of wind this up, but um, my boys, my younger boys, and I were going to Walmart in Amherst. And for those of you who live around here, you know that uh, typically you go right on 101 and you're right there. Well, this particular day, it was a Saturday, I chose to go through the center of Milford, New Hampshire. And for those of you who know Milford, New Hampshire, there's an oval, uh, just an oval, a nice little common there. And as I was approaching the oval, the traffic suddenly was bottlenecked. It was stopped, just like this. I was in my car going this way, and can you guess who was in the motorcycle going this way with Jane Fonda with her arms around? Not really Jane Fonda, but she looked like Jane Fonda with her arms around? None other than Paul. And uh, something really weird happened. Like, yeah, have you ever had like an involuntary movement when you, you jerk? And I, I jerked it and I tooted the horn, which I didn't, I didn't really want to do. And, uh, and then he had his sunglasses on, he looked over at me and he waved. I mean, I knew about the other woman, so it wasn't that that was the first time I got a, a, a hint of it. So, and he, he waved, and I waved at him, and I mean, the Holy Spirit was in control. Of course, he made it, he made sure that we were heading this way. There was no way I could turn around and run over him. You know, <laughs> not that I would, as holy as I am. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, he, uh, you know, he got to see me, and I got to see him. And all I could think of is, wow, this can't be a coincidence. I mean, Paul lived in Keene at the time. He typically worked every Saturday because he's in the car business. What are the chances that he would be at exactly that spot at exactly that time of day? I mean, it's practically nil. It just wouldn't happen. If I said to him, meet me at three, 
02 uh, and 17 seconds in, in the oval at Milford, would it happen? No, it would just not happen. So my two younger boys were in the back and I said, guys, you've got to pray with me today. And you know, if you live with me, you kind of get used to somebody like me. And I just said, we got to pray. I said, you don't have to say anything, but you've got to agree with me, okay guys? And they probably did this. She goes again. And I just said, Lord, what just happened? It cannot be a coincidence. Out of the millions and millions of people in the world that are not my husband, you chose to put him in that spot at that precise moment so that I would see him and he would see me. So I'm going to trust you, Lord, to bring about the good that you promised because your word says that you will work all things together for good to those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And I did believe those things about myself. So we get to Walmart. And as I got out of the car, I, I felt the Holy Spirit said to me, today I'm going to raise up someone for you in Walmart that will pray for you and your family. And I shrugged my spiritual shoulders like, huh, was that, was that you, Lord? I think it was you, but it might have been me, was it? Yeah, I think it was you. Um, but Lord, how am I gonna know this person? You will know. But how, I mean, somebody I go to church with, or, uh, you know, I mean, and then I was really getting over, well, maybe somebody with a, a collar or a nun or something that I could look at them and, you know, be able to identify that there's some kind of godly person. And he just again said, you will know. Now, it had been about a minute and a half, and I was just kind of standing in that common aisle before all the aisles that go down. And I'm standing there. And suddenly, this young man, I'd say in about his 30s, walked by, had a t-shirt on, and it said, The Lord's Gym. His pain, your gain. So I was like, that's him. So I'm following him. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, Lord. And I, but I didn't, I didn't take time to really think. I just followed him. And he was down, um, you know, in the fishing equipment section. And he was puttering around in the fishing equipment equipment section and I tapped him on the shoulder and I said, excuse me, I've never done anything like this before, but today when I got out of my car here at Walmart, um, God spoke to me and he said that he was going to raise up someone here in Walmart who was going to be praying for my, my family and me. And this guy got up at, at, and he, he went, praise the Lord. <laughs> and I, I really, honestly, when I think about it, what if it had been the wrong, wrong person? What would happen? But I mean, I, I was relieved that he said, praise the Lord. And then he said, well, sister, how can I pray for you? I said, well, today on my way here to Walmart, I saw, my boys and I saw my husband and his girlfriend on his motorcycle. And I am believing that God is gonna bring that man back to himself, back to me, back to our marriage, back to our family, and that he is going to heal us and that he is going to use us as an example that nothing is impossible with him. And Adam was his name, said, Judy, don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't listen to man. Don't listen to woman. But you keep your eyes firmly planted on the word of God. For I want to tell you, Judy, your husband's relationship with this other woman cannot and will not prevail against the word and will of Almighty 